Okay, continuing on with our tutorial on setting up and exporting a model TVK, we're going to go through the processes of importing TVK. Okay, so I'm using uh, the latest uh, July UDK 2011, and what we do here is we've got the content browser open. So the content browser open. I'm just going to right-click in my main area here, and I'm going to go up to import. Previously, I exported a FBX file from 3ds Max called toot underscore rescar01, which is my file here. I'm going to open it like so. So here, I'm going to give the package a name, which would be the name of my car. So I'll just call it toot racecar. I'm going to worry about a group at this stage. I just did the name as toot racecar. Going through my import options here. And uh, static or oh, skill little mesh. I'm going to open the advanced. Oh, it's not the advanced. Sorry. Go through to where it says static mesh, and where it says advanced, it says explicit normals. Just make sure this is switched on, and just click OK. And here we can see our model has come through. If we double click it. We should have it looking like so. So we can see all our bones are all in position as expected. So we're going to be working with this model for setup for UDK. Alright, so I'm just going to close this window for now. And oh, no, I'll just move it to one side. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up some materials. The default material in UDK is this checker pattern. Uh, I don't have any textures for this car at the moment, but uh, if you did, you would import them uh, at the same time as the FBX. So I'm just going to right click in the viewport here. And I'm also going to create a new material. So I'm just going to call this one generic uh, race car 01. And what we have here is several windows for this. I'm not going to go into explaining this too much. But essentially, what we want to do is we want to plug in some color into our diffuse input here on our material. So we just go over to the right here and right click. What we want to do is make a constant, in particular new constant 3 vector. So this has three values which we can then just click on the output and connect it to the input of the fuse. And if you double click in this section here we can bring up our color selector and just assign any kind of groovy color we're interested in. You can see in our viewport here the results. So just click OK. And that should do for the color. So I'll just close this. It will ask you if you want to save. Of course you do. And I have my new material selected in yellow. So highlighted yellow means it says selected. So if I go over to my car now and I go into the section here called materials, expand that. You can see I have zero material and one material. I'm going to assign this to the first slot. And you do that by clicking the green arrow here, which will assign any selected object in the content browser. Okay. And you can see how it is now assigned to the rest of the vehicle. Now, of course, I want to create another material for my windshield or canopy or cockpit, depending on what you want to call it. So I'm going to go back to my content browser and right click one more time and I'm going to create another material and I'm just going to call this generic race car 02. Let's click OK. Okay, this time I will create a constant 3 vector which I'll connect to my diffuse. The color I'm going to set for a sort of an off white, mostly black, something like this. Not very important because what's important about this material is I'm going to create a new constant 3 vector and I'm going to hook this up to the opacity which will basically set the transparency of the cockpit here. So at the moment black means completely transparent so I need to bring up the value a little way which will make it a little bit more see-through, less see-through rather. At the moment you can't see anything in the viewport here, 
there's no nothing going on that tells you it's transparent but if you go over and you just click on the preview material okay and what we're looking for here is our blend modes and we're going to go for a blend mode that is translucent and now you can see through it so you can just close this window want to apply to changes of course you do yes and we have it selected again so we'll go over to our skeletal mesh browser editor here rather and this time in the this first or the number one channel I'm going to assign it here so just clicking on the green arrow it will assign it and you can see now you can look inside the car all right that's pretty cool all right so let's go up and set up our collisions so collisions are used in the game so it knows when it runs into something so we're going to use per poly bone collision and this is basically here so we're going to look at per poly, poly bone collision here so I'm going to add a bone and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the root bone and I'm going to add some parents to this or parent some objects to this so I'm going to add a new item here I'm going to add the front right tire like so and to get it visualizing go up to view and select show collision and you can see how my tires been added but the rest of the tires are not so I'm just going to add all the bones to this so front right uh, axle okay let's open a few of those so front left tire front left axle so back right tire oops you can see it's starting to appear now and back right axle doesn't really matter what order you do this in okay we need two more bones and finally back left oops uh, tire and of course back left axle all right so this collision is done so I can just switch that off like so okay now I want to set up a node for my camera to attach to this is called a socket so I need to add a socket and the way to do that we go up to the mesh menu here go down to the very bottom and it's called the socket manager brings up a dialog window so what we want to do is create a new socket and we want to have this parented to the root bone and this one has a specific name capital C for camera and it is the camera so this is where our camera is going to attach to encode and in the viewport you can see it has attached so what I'm going to do is just going to position this in the driving position near where my head would be of course you can make the camera anywhere you would like to have it positioned the important thing to note here is that the camera always looks down at the x-axis so I need to adjust its position which is the yaw to rotate it around into position and that should do so I'm going to close this window and I'm going to close this window now I'm going to save this one thing to notice is if you have an asterisk it has not been saved so if it crashes now you are screwed so right click and save shoot race car, car is the name I would like oops let's go put it into the correct location so I'm going to go into my UDK folder to my latest UDK I'm going to put it under UDK game under content under UT3 under vehicles it's just convenient for me to put it there so there we go shoot um, <coughs> race car it should be right just as that, no numbers required, and save. Alright. So now we have our skeletal mesh set up.